Yes, it's that episode. Yes, it's the one about the Antichrist kid. Yes, we know that this one never came back. But we got Jack. Wasn't that such a great alternative? Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 6 of Supernatural Season 5. I believe the children are our future. This is an episode that's actually co-written by Andrew Dabb and Laughlin, if I'm correct. This episode actually has two really good bits to it. It has one really good humorous half, and then it just goes off into super dark, evil Darkville for the other half. And that's maybe one of the reasons why I'm not going to give this episode a perfect review. Let me explain as to why. It's still a really good episode. This episode follows the brothers coming to a town that has these strange, strange occurrences happening. Kind of some of something to that of wishful thinking. Someone being killed by a joy buzzer. Someone having itching powder in their hair and literally scratching their brains out. Someone holding their face like this and locking it like that. The episode starts off quite humorous in terms of its overall perspective. These kind of juvenile ways when people are dying. Again, it's a little bit of a step up from that of wishful thinking and you can clearly see it's a bit of a child bit but then it's when they figure out who it is first they go to the house that kind of everything is circulating around and they find the kid there and just within about like i think the f quickest assumptions of everything and i think it's only because they know the things that they know this kid essentially has the super shining which actually thinking of that i'm kind of surprised that they didn't make a shining joke in this episode maybe they couldn't but i'm surprised that they didn't considering just everything surrounding it the ability of being able to make things be maybe it's a little bit more than the shining but i've been reading dr sleep in the shining the last little while so it kind of gives me those parallels but seeing this jesse kid it's a pretty impressive performance from this little guy I was really impressed with him considering he only ever had one episode in this whole show and he's just left such a mark on the entire lore of the show but that's because of the precedent of what his character is after the brothers kind of figure out that he's the one who's causing everything they then go and find his mother and that is when the episode completely does a 180 it's like if you were on one of those teeter-totters and a big fat kid just does this Yes, I'm not wearing any pants. That's essentially what happens. You see this change in direction. Find out that his mother was possessed by a demon, gave birth to an illegitimate antichrist child. Like, it's dark. We see how the child is birthed, sort of, and it's just, it's just hell. Like, this woman has gone through an absolute nightmare. Supposedly she's a virgin, but she looks like she's just been through. I don't know how old the actress was, and I don't know how old the character was supposed to be. You can see that this woman's bitten through some hard times. Then, right after they leave, the demon just so happens to reappear. And I thought that was a kind of a bit of a coinky dink. Um, I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about this demon considering what it helped create, what it birthed in terms of just the lore and just the whole big bads of big bads. Considering how powerful Jesse is and this demon, as far as I know, is never going to return or make himself known. Hey, I'm the one who fathered that antichrist thing. Yo, me give me a paycheck but it still leads to a really cool showdown between castiel jesse the demon mom and the brothers castiel says hey that's the antichrist kid we gotta go kill him sam and dean try to convince castiel of otherwise but castiel is pretty set because while castiel is obviously cut off from heaven he's still trying to do the right thing he's still trying to do what he thinks is right and he thinks that killing the kid is the right thing to do even though there are better ways to go about it Castiel gets turned into a toy, and that's when the kid comes to the full realization of what his powers are. Then we have this really cool battle of the minds, battle of the moralities, when the demon mom comes in and slams Sam and Dean against the wall, Dean particularly going bang, 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 bang. I like how they have a very serious conversation with Jesse. While they really try to cram a lot in in this final 15 minutes of the episode, they try to cram a lot in, and that's why I say if anything the worst part about this episode is the fact that they have two different narratives trying to essentially share an episode when really maybe the humorous bit should have been shortened down and the dark bit should have been given a little bit more 
if anything, either more time or a whole second part. Like I said, this is a really big moment in the show and so many people talk about this kid. And considering just how nothing is ever answered about him, it's just mysterious. The brothers are able to convince the kid to not go on the demon's side. He sends the demon away. Then an even more mature and really thought-provoking discu thought discussion is have with the kid about what he's got to do with the rest of his life. What does he do? Does he go be with his uh, motherless child, like with his original birth mother? Does he stay with the adopted parents? No, he just full-on deeks. He just leaves. It's kind of interesting talking about the idea of lying to your kids, telling them falsehoods to protect them from the real world sort of idea. And even Dean says, I wish dad had lied to us more. Obviously in retrospect of considering everything that they've gone through leading up to this point, yeah, I would say that yeah, maybe things would have been a little bit better for them, maybe a little worse, but all kind of irrelevant at this point, mainly because this character, not only Jesse, but the mom, as far as I know, and that demon, never come back. It's this big empty what if that the show just refused to ever answer. It was a little weird, but I said in the last review I had an answer and that's essentially Jack. Jack is Andrew Dabb's reinterpretation of the Jesse character. Sure, he couldn't bring the other actor back. Sure, it would have been a little bit weird to bring this, hey, this obscure character all the way back from season five up to season 13. So that's why he just went with the literal son of the devil, made him something more powerful than the Antichrist. I think that was Dab trying to give some form of continuation to that story, even though it's not the same character. Again, it's a bit disappointing that you never find out whatever happened to him. It's an answer that the show refused to give a straight up answer to. And it's probably because this kid was too powerful. The idea of him being able to do all of this is just so ridiculous. And kind of the this level of seriousness that the show had at this time, it was just too much to use. Jack in the latter seasons makes sense just because of the campiness that the, the, the show would kind of devolve into and it was just kind of taken like with bread and butter. Whereas back then they just couldn't use this character because he clearly could have done a lot of shit barely with any sort of, of, of loss. If anything, he probably could have taken on Lucifer or had a good chance at him. But again, they didn't answer that. They didn't want to because they kind of were like, hmm, maybe this person's a little bit too powerful. So we're going to send him away and just never adjust that. But in the end, I believe in our children is still a phenomenal episode. It just has that slight shortcoming of trying to share two different narrative forwards at the same time. Again, if they gave up a little bit more of the humor for more of the dark, or if they just split it up between two episodes, I think this could have been a great two-parter. You could have taken away Fallen Idols and just put two bits here, but maybe they just didn't want to do that. They wanted to have a one-off episode after the four really hard-hitting story episodes. So in the end, my final score for I Believe in Our Children Are Our Future is a six out of seven. It's a really, really good episode. It's just not the perfect episode I thought I would remember it as. But those are just my opinions, and let's see what you guys had to say about this episode, because I know you probably had to say a bit. I Believe seems to be a fan favorite for good reason. It's a good episode that blends humor, horror, and drama well, and unlike most episodes of season 5, seems more hopeful. I have mixed feelings on whether Jesse should have come back to Supernatural. It seems odd that he didn't return this season, his story feels like a setup for a larger plot development, but at the same time his absence down the road doesn't hurt the season, and given how Nick and Michael were reused and misused in season 14 and 15, it's kind of a relief that he wasn't brought back. One of the things that always bothers me watching this episode is the disagreement between Cass and the boys on how to handle Jesse. Is either view truly more right or wrong? Cass's decision is very harsh and doesn't work out well, but the world's fate is already on the line. Can they afford a liability as potential destruction, uh, destructive as this boy to remain? Is the price of keeping their humanity too expensive in this case? There will be a similar conflict between Cass and the boys at the end of season six. I'm curious to see what your thoughts are. Um, I get, you know, I, I know where you're coming from here and same with Cass. I get where Cass is coming from. Um, considering his power, yes, he is like, like a, essentially giving nukes to a child but at the same time i understand why the boys don't want to kill him because he is a child he is a literal boy both 
our extremes of the other side, but it was, I understood where Cass was coming from, essentially just because of what he's trained in. I think someone's gonna make a comment about that later on here. I believe the children are our future, a mythology episode with some great moments like when Dean tested out the joy buzzer on Sam. It was extra careless of him, but it was a classic Dean and Sam moment. It's amazing how early Supernatural episodes can effortlessly uh, shift from broad humor to gut-wrenching tragedy and still work. Yes, it, most definitely in this episode. It is a bit, um, it's a bit of a shift, but it still works decently well. The biggest, my biggest episode, uh, problem with this episode is Antichrist. I think the characters made one hell of a whoopsie creating him as a character and thought they could just bury him into obscurity. He's big time powerful given that what theoretically he could do which creates an imbalance in the power dynamics of the show. Given that they kept depowering and repowering Cass, I don't think we they'd want to do that with the kid and potentially create one of the most powerful allies slash enemies on the show and causing all sorts of mayhem in the writing room. They'd write themselves into a corner real quick. I have to mention this. Great casting of Jesse Turner. I like him. He's smart and self-reliant. Not an easy part for a child to play. Yeah, no, I think he did a decent job. I thought he actually did do okay job considering the material and yeah it is a bit of a shift from humor to darkness and that's kind of why i feel that this maybe should have been two episodes because there's a lot of content that happens in this episode and it's a bit of a shift it works okay pretty decently but it is still a bit of a jarring shift i believe that the children are a future is a great episode and the introduction of jesse turner played by gatlin griffith he did a great job. I'm still angry that he never returned to the series after this one and only appearance. Jesse had so much potential that the show could have done with him, and yet Andrew Dad basically decided to waste it all on Lucifer's actual son, Jack, even though I do love the character Jack. He is basically a replacement for Jesse. Yes, he totally is, which is I still don't get, especially since Gatlin said he would love to return to the show. Jesse should have returned and been the focus of season 12 to me, especially since Lucifer was out of the cage. Now, the reason why they hired, uh, well, they got Jack, I feel, is, um, like I said, one, he's an adult, uh, working around kid hours, especially what Supernatural did, would have been a pain in the ass. Kid hours, you can only have actors for like eight hours. Um, but then, uh, also, Jack was a popular, I think he was a, he was a little bit of a heartthrob, from what I've gathered, I think he was on Riverdale or something like that, but I, I believe that's the reason why they went with him. It's a decent episode with some really good moments, Castile is sitting on a whoopsie cushion is still hilarious. On the other hand, it's a real shame that Jesse was never brought back in later seasons, but on the other hand, I'm kind of glad that he was never brought back, considering how Andrew Dad mistreated characters like Gabriel and Adam and Michael, or made them completely unrecognizable, like Lucifer, Chuck and God in his supernatural era. Overall, I'd give this episode a 5 out of 7. Oh, I'm higher than you on this time. Uh, but yeah, no, like uh, I'm definitely getting that from you guys, that you guys are all pissed off that Jesse never came back, and it's understandably so. I have no idea if this is true, but I read somewhere that Andrew Dabb and David Laughlin, mean, mostly Dabb, judging by the way he ran the show in the later seasons, wanted Sam and Dean to be a potential father figure uh, for this kid, take him, and train, take him in and train him, but Eric Kripke uh, rejected the idea because he didn't want Supernatural to turn to a 7th Heaven family style show, so they just opted out for him to be a one-time character. As for comparing him to Jack, well, Jack was a great character when he was introduced, but I wonder if Alex watched this episode and decided to act to have Jack act like this character. Jack had potential to be something interesting, and there was like a few brief moments of, uh, but he was such a goddamn child that it was so boring. You never got any kind of more further development with him, and that really pissed me off. Ah, yes, the Antichrist, the character powerful uh, to the canon. Personally, I'm not sure what you would do with a character like that. Bet it was really annoying to have a kid tag along for three seasons, causing unnecessary problems. <laughs> yeah, because that's what happened later on. Kind of bummed that they never brought Jesse back. I always had an idea of on what if they brought Jesse back in Jane uh, Nephilim from season eight for an episode together uh, to try and kill Castiel. Because remember, when Castiel found out what these two were, he wanted to kill them right away. So it would have been cool to see both work together and yet a little payback. I believe The Children Are Our Future is a great dark comedy episode with some serious moments. The whole debate why Jesse didn't return is, just, is Castiel makes it abundantly clear that in this episode that Jesse is only as powerful as he is when Lucifer walks the earth. So when Lucifer doesn't walk the earth, Jesse is irrelevant in terms of power. Good job, Joe. I do love how Castiel is so driven in this episode and could immediately see 
uh, through Sam paralleling his life with Jesse, but it's crazy enough to think that Castiel would be willing to kill a child without a moment's hesitation. Drax uh, from the Guardians of the Galaxy would benefit from this episode since he he takes li everything literally like Jesse does. Yeah, essentially so. But yeah, no good point for pointing out that, uh, Joe. I think you just broke my argument. <laughs> like I said, season five has three bad episodes and we've got two of them back to back. This is an Andrew Dab episode. You told me that Andrew Dab wrote good episodes in the Cricky era and I'm sorry, I really don't see it. Well, we've already actually had quite a few, actually. Uh, you can see his fan fiction style writing everywhere in this episode and every time I watch it, you can see how it is less and less doesn't fit with the overall narrative. I never understood why we needed the Antichrist when adapting biblical lore. To me, this character is problematic in the books themselves, and somehow Andrew Dabb managed to make him even more nonsensical. Why do demons need Lucifer when they literally make a number of Antichrists in any human? His inclusion makes no sense, and I'm only sorry for the kid because he tries really hard to make the character relevant, but Andrew Dabb's writing ruined him. Now, if an angel demon baby, like in the Leaf fan fiction, then I'd be down. I don't know, I, I thought he was decent. I thought this was a pretty decently written episode. Yeah, like, I'll admit, I do kind of see your point about the idea of, like, a, a, just a nonsensical demon making an Antichrist, which is, again, why I kind of say that this should have been maybe a two-parter episode to kind of further fill in that element. You could have taken out Fallen Idols and put this episode as a two-parter. Um, but we are getting some good ones. Like we're gonna, like I so said, we're gonna get Dark Side of the Moon. We're gonna get Sam Interrupted, which is a very good one, and obviously Hammer of the Gods. So that, those are coming up later. All right, guys, thank you for your comments. And now we've got a f another funny episode. This is actually a really good funny episode: The Curious Case of Dean Winchester. I remember going to see Curious Case of Benjamin Button in theaters a long time ago. So this is going to be a little bit of a, a retrospective on that, but it's a really funny episode. So make sure to give me guys comments about that episode and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did leave a like, and if you're interested in more subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie. Thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.